can. <laughs> it's fabulous. It's a really pretty flannel coat. Oh my god. <laughs> you see why these vines are divine. And then the leaves. Quilt out loud, baby! Quilt Out Loud is brought to you by That Patchwork Place, publisher of America's best love quilt books. RFL Italian Threads, perfectly suited for every quilt project. Northcott, cottons that feel like silk. And by Reliable Corporation, press like the pros. Guidelines for quilting, prepare for perfect piecing. And Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Welcome to Quilt Out Loud. I'm Mark Lipinski. And I'm Jody Davis, and you're watching Quilt Out Loud on QNNTV.com, and we are so excited to be here. We've got a great show today, of course. We have a great show, but I want to guess what I got last night. What? What? I'm surprising you. I got an iPhone. I love the dots. It's my <laughs> first iPhone. I've been wanting one for a long time. You've been wanting to ditch your phone forever. I did, but you know what? I only wanted it for the new technology. You oh, know, yeah. I think I'm the Pepsi generation, so I have to have everything new. So I just got my new iPhone. <laughs> so call me. Call me. <laughs> or text message or email. You can get it all right there. I'm lousy at that stuff. So what do you got? Well, I wanted to show this cute little quilt that I made. It's only 16 by 16 inches by 16 inches. And the reason I made it, I'm donating it to the Alliance for American Quilts. It's a fundraiser. Oh, which is go. really exciting and a whole bunch of us entered this contest and the contest was crazy for quilts so the way i interpret it is i'm crazy about quilts and they are always rolling around in my head driving me crazy so what i did was i printed out quilts that i've either designed and made or have just designed and not made yet and i put them on printable fabric and fused them down that's really nice so is this you down here well sort of i guess so. i was going to say and you might want to consider a little eyebrow wax <laughs> but that's pretty good that's really neat. I love how you did this. Here's your rubber ducky quilt. Yep, that's one that I actually did on Love of Quilting. Did that's great. On that. yep. That's great. So what's really cool is that all of these quilts are going to be auctioned on eBay at the end of October into the middle of November. So it's a wonderful fundraiser for a great cause. So I can own this. You can own this. See, that's why I don't get involved in that stuff. Everybody will be bidding for mine for like five cents, ten cents, twenty-five cents. Uh, Forget no, it. Oh no, I think I'm for a lot. You. First of all, I can't sew anyway. So here's the deal. We have a great show. Yep. We have a great show yep, coming up. As usual. What are we doing first? Um, well, first we're going to do some really cool, well, we're going to do two things at once. We're going to do some quilted cupcakes. As a matter of fact, I was just in my supermarket and I saw it on Family Circle and Woman's Day, cupcakes on the front. So we're going to give you, I'm going to show you my favorite way to decorate cupcakes for like a quilt guild or a quilting show or a quilting baby yep. shower, you know, all patchwork on your cupcakes. Yum. Sounds good. Now yep. what are we going to do? What do you mean what are you going to do? We're going to do home businesses. That was your line. <laughs> we're going to do home businesses. We're, you know, so many times I get letters from people at home wondering how they can start a business, a quilting business from their home, how they can make money, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so, especially in this economy. So um, we're doing, we have a bunch of uh, great guests. Then, oh, then let me tell you what I'm going to do. What? Then I'm going to Liza Pryor Lucy's house. We're mm. going down to New Hope, Pennsylvania, where she's going to give us a tour. Now, Liza, she designs all of her quilts with Kay Facet. I know, this is big time. This is really big time. Yeah. She, she has a home business, but she has a, a really interesting story and a great house, and, I, and we want to show so it to you. So it's a doorknob. It's a doorknob. Cool. And then we're going to do a great project. It's this quilt right in front of me. This is flannel, which I, had, I did the steps for this to, to work on it for the show. I love sewing on the flannel. This did is called, you? Yeah. A I lot did. of people don't like I it. I know. When they say it shifts and everything, I had no problem. It was like butter, but maybe it's the baby lock sewing machine and the Aurifil thread that made it so easy. No, I'm sure it was. But you know, the other thing with uh, with these, when you dry them, you have to be careful. You have to keep taking the lint out of your yes. dryer, otherwise no. you can start a fire. Yep. So that's really important. But I love flannel. And that really feels... What's under here? By the, I never even asked. Uh, oh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, before you tell me. We got to finish with the lineup for the show, and all right. then we'll tell you. We're going to be that? doing book reviews, and yep. we're going to be talking all about machine quilting, some of the best books and worst books that you can buy for yeah. machine quilting. We're honest with and our book reviews. Very These honest, and I'm not a very good book, uh, a machine quilter, so I tried it. So I tried the books, and I'll tell you what I think. Okay, and so will great. you. Okay, so I know there's something under here. I know it's a surprise for me, but I have no idea what it is, but I suspect. And I suspect it's a giant Clark bar. In your dreams. No, it's non-fattening. <laughs> it is your new fabric line. Oh my Oakdale. God! I have never, I haven't seen, 
This is a first, folks. I haven't seen the fabric. This is a brand new fabric. Oh, it looks good. What do you think? Oh, I think it's gorgeous. It's Oakdale. It's for Mark Lipinski's home from Northcott. Look, here are my chickens. I've got a riot inside these sunny. You know, I raise these, I raise chickens in my yeah. house on Pickle Road. So this is it. Oakdale's the hometown, my hometown, Oakdale, Pennsylvania, where mm -hmm. I grew up. And what I really love about these fabrics, I love how this green turned out. Isn't that cool? What, oh, and this stripe is terrific. What I love about them is they all go together, but it doesn't look contrived like so many fabric lines right. have. But you know how I designed this? Well, how I designed it was I just took the color palette from the traditional repro fabrics, and then we put graphic designs ah. with it. So you can mix and match this with your, with your Civil War repros. Ah. And also, you can put a little hip, a hip uh, graphic design with your Civil War repros, or you can do a very traditional quilt with a real graphic flavor. I love these. I'm loving these. I'm glad you're I'm happy with them. Thanks for bringing them. You're welcome. Yeah. Love you guys. Well, stay tuned for another great episode of Quilt Out Loud. Wow. <laughs> I love it. I like this. Let's go song. I like yeah. it. <laughs> Mark and I are in the kitchen and we're cooking out loud. We're cooking out loud, baby. And you know what? Daddy likes nothing better than cupcakes and baking. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. <laughs> so here's the thing. You know, I like making quilts. You like making quilts. Mm -hmm. We're just going to do follow the rage and the trend for all of America right now and make quilt blocks on top of cupcakes. Yep. First, this is what we do. Ready? We just bake our cupcakes. We just put a light uh, layer of vanilla frosting or white, white frosting so you don't see the cake when you're decorating. Get a toothpick and you just make a square. See that, Jody? What design are you making? What block? I don't know. I think I'm going to just make a, probably a log cabin. Okay. And then you do the same thing. Now, don't, don't, and, but I think it's easier make, for you, a four patch. Yeah, I want to make something easy to make. A four patch is really easy. Because I got it used to using the tape. Right. So what I do is just score the top of my cupcake. Do you see how I did that? Next, we're just going to take our colors and we're going to use size 14 tips. And we're going to just make little stars with oh. our bag of frosting. Do you see that? So for a log cabin, we want to have a little red middle, which is very traditional to a log cabin. Right, Jode? Okay. All right. Mine's coming out the top. So what you... <laughs> <laughs> I think you get messy with this. There you go. Move it. Don't worry, Martha Stewart. She's not taking your place. <laughs> what I would do is make the outside first and then fill it in. Okay. That's so there the is best a way to do it. There's a method to the madness. Don't steal my... <laughs> Paper towels. Also, I want you to know that you can buy these things at your hobby and craft store. It's Wilton Dyes. They're really high concentrated food coloring. So that way you get the really rich colors rather than just the little liquid food coloring you use at your grocery store. It, you can get it at your grocery store. Is it paste? It's paste. Oh, That's right. Cool. You just put it in with the toothpaste. Toothpaste. You put it in with a toothpick. Toothpaste is how I keep my teeth white. Oh, we know all about your white All right, teeth. there you go. They're almost as white as this icing. That's right. So I'm just going to create this just like I would a uh, log cabin. So the trick mark is to hold the top of the bag. Yeah, because look at the mesh you're making. I don't want to say anything, but I'm just saying. Hey, excuse me, you <laughs> put all, all that there and you stole my paper out. towels. It's this is the other trick, lots of these. <laughs> lots of these. <laughs> all right. These are really cute. Now, Mark, can you use different, are these called nibs? Yeah, they're tips. Tips. Can yeah. you use different ones? You can, but and when you're doing a big cake, then you want to use different tips that are a little thicker. Oh, but since these are cupcakes. But these are cupcakes, little... you just want to use those. Now, look, I'm almost finished with my uh, log cabin. I'm just pushing it. You know, when I was a kid, my mom made us the most wonderful cakes. She made one when my cat had kittens and had all the kittens all over the cake. It was so cute. Really? And of course, we had a million horse heads because we had horses. Now listen, here's how you finish it off. You get your white icing and then you just make okay. bigger rosettes all the way around it. Take a look. Oh, it just finishes it right up. It's like binding. It's like binding. <laughs> and there you have, now I'm going to give this to you next. And okay. this thing, you're going to do this with yours. Do you see that? A yep. little log cabin. It's pretty cute, cute, isn't it? Yeah. Then, last but not least, Wilton no. makes a product called Fairy Dust. Fairy Dust. Yeah, and it comes in all different colors, but I like the clear stuff. It's just little sugar. It looks oh. like 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 fish food, actually. Are you gonna put that on the? Yeah, and when huh? you sprinkle it on the top, it gives your icing a, a really wet, sparkly look. Do you oh, see how, that? It's like beading. It's like beading be on clothes. It's embellishment. It's embellishment. It's embellishment. Yeah, it's embellish your cupcakes. All right. Mine's a little messy, but you you're gonna think? give me a. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you have. And they wonder why men turn gay. <laughs>
This girl cannot cook. I'm telling you, how could you screw up a cupcake? I'm an Hold on. Cook. Listen, here's the deal. No. I'm putting on some fairy, fairy dust. dust. I'll <laughs> save everything with a little fairy dust. Here you go. A little fairy dust for you. Now look at some of the other ones I made earlier. Here we go. If you look at these plates, I love this. Here's a little flying geese. Yep. Here's a little nine, nine patch. patch. Here's a four patch. Like mine. Here's a rail fence. Cool. Here's a log cabin. This is another four patch, a half square triangle. This is a drunkard path. Yep. And this is a mistake. But who's going to know? <laughs> that's the way I quilt, by the way. So that's it. So if you really want to impress your friends when you're having a little quilting party, mm -hmm. what better way than to make quilt patch Cupcakes. Can you imagine if you take the tray out, how thrilled they'd be? Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> I'm going to have Jody eat one of these pretty cup... No, I'm going to have her eat the ugly one. Here's the ugly cupcake. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, came. yum. Looks beautiful. Well, there you go. Mm. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Quilt Out Loud. You know, I get letters all the time from people at home wondering how they can start a business in the quilting industry right from their home. So Jody and I got together and thought this would be a great segment to kind of explain how that happened. So we invited three of our friends who have businesses that they started in their homes. First we have Debbie Calenti from Quilters Obsession which is a mail order business and then Patsy Thompson who has does these wonderful videos on free motion work with her sewing machine and Linda Lum de Bono has written all sorts of books and is a designer so they've all come together to talk about their home businesses. That's right but we all have one thing in common. We all started, all of us, even Jody, we all started our businesses in our basement. Well, I didn't have a basement. I was in a log cabin, no basement, but... Okay, so <laughs> Granny Clampa was in a log cabin. But otherwise, those of us who were able to dig a hole had a basement. So, what about that? I'm still in the basement. You are? Yes. I have a walkout basement on the bottom of my townhouse, and I share that space with my kids. Uh, they have half of it, well, maybe three quarters of it is filled with their toys, and the other half is my uh, sewing gear. Is that right? And yours in yep, the basement. Yep, we still shoot our videos in the basement studio sewing room that is a walkout basement. And you got out of the basement. I'm somewhat in the basement. I package. <laughs> I package, but um, we also do trade shows, so we've outgrown the basement as well. Now, here's the neat thing. You all made lemonade from lemons. The quilting industry was not really servicing you. Is that correct? Yes. And so you had to come up with your own kind of thing. Patsy, what about that? What I did was I teach free motion machine quilting and people always say, I want to take your hands home with me. They, it just helps me to watch your hands. And I thought, I got to come up with a video. So I wrote a book proposal to a publishing company for a book with a DVD in it. A big, a big one? Yeah, a real, a, an official great quilting publishing company and they jumped right on it. But when the contract finally came, there was no mention of the DVD. So what we did was we got some great equipment. We did it all over again and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. What about you? Well, being in Central Jersey, the rents are just astronomical. I didn't want to give up, on, you know, any of my children to pay rent. Um, so I started the internet business. I researched different internet uh, businesses already out there, and I, I jotted down what I liked and didn't like about the other businesses. Um, I met with a programmer. He just gave me a quote from my website. Um, we started meeting with sales reps, ordering product. Spent a whole summer basically adding product to the website, and we went live. It'll be four years this August. So that's so, how it started. And then we started doing trade shows or quilt shows as well. So just with so, an idea. Yes. An idea and a basement. And <laughs> my customers out, you know, all over the world. We ship everywhere. And I, I find customers who don't have a quilt store either nearby or that store doesn't meet their needs. And they order from us online. Well, you had a lemon too. Oh. But yours is a different kind of lemon. Huge <laughs> lemon. I moved, for, I, well, I left my job in Canada in pharmaceuticals. I got married within a week, moved to the US, and I was bored. And so I went to a local shop. And, uh, Dude, was, you were a bored <laughs> new bride? I'll tell you what I would have been doing that week. But go ahead. <laughs> kind of bored. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, I went into the shop. I was attracted to quilting, but I liked bright fabrics. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, at the time when I started, it was like a lot of primitives and a lot of muddy type of fabrics, and I couldn't find any. But I did scramble some together, put some patterns together. Um, Quilt Connection in, it used to be in Berkeley Heights helped me out. Mm -hmm. And then I put my first pattern together. I, Later on, I did my first show in Atlantic City, six months pregnant, and then the Martingale folks came and asked me to write a book. Henry Glass, who I'm still with, um, asked me to design fabric, and the rest is history. Okay. So everyone here found a niche. Patsy, <laughs> you found one with your video. 
Right. Um, for me, again, what my students were telling me was my trigger. They kept saying, I want to take those hands home with me and keep watching them move. And a book can teach you a lot about free motion machine quilting, but you can't see it. This is not funny because you don't quilt. No, I don't quilt. I know. I don't, but I want to see your hands moving at home. Oh, you know, I totally understand, Patsy, because, you know, I queue on TV, videos, and I think that's how people learn. Right, right, right. So there were no real quilting DVDs as far as free motion machine quilting, so I knew I had to move very very, very fast yes. and what we wanted to do because I figured if I can do this somebody else can do this it's so a good I idea to, somebody's gonna yeah so I, we really put our nose to the grindstone we wanted to come up with several titles over the next year to year and a half so by the time the rest of the world caught up with us we would have a name out there and people would start to think Patsy Thompson designs free motion machine quilting. free motion quilting equals Patsy exactly That's it. <laughs> yes well it's the branding exactly it's the branding. we all did that I mean I think yeah. we did that I you did, did that it. how did we do it well, I, I got into it, and no, like, as I said, no one else was really doing the brights, and that's what I was really attracted to. It was a struggle at first, but I just, just kept plugging away at it. The distributors believed in me, the magazines believed in me, and I just kept going, and the fabric companies did too, and I just used all of those resources and put it all together and just stuck with it. And then I was the first, one of the first ones out there who did the brights. Nobody ever say, believed in you. me. <laughs> Nobody ever believed in me. I had to do my own damn stuff. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> What about you? Did anybody believe in you? Nobody You're doing it from your basement. <laughs> My husband believed in me. Oh, there you go. Yay. Who had the credit card? You or your husband? <laughs> well, well, it's joint. Okay, okay, okay. It's only joint till the divorce. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, no, I, I wanted an internet store so I could still be home with my children. Right. Um, and I try to carry a variety of fabrics so that um, someone who doesn't find what they're looking for in their local quilt store can go online. We have a little bit of everything. And I only carry the name brand products. I only carry Northcott. I carry all his oh, collections. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Northcott, P&B, Timeless, Moda, Benertex. Um, the big names. We right. don't carry junk. And we try to turn our orders around within 24 hours, so as soon as it comes in, it goes out, you know, the latest, the very next morning. Um, right. We Be provide customer service if they have a question. Well, dude, you have to. Us. You have to, have because to. you know what? Once you get that inspiration, you buy the fabric, you want the fabric there the next right. day, yeah. Yeah. because by the day after, you're already <laughs> yeah. on your next project. And, <laughs> Plus, then, <laughs> and we've been spoiled by Amazon. That's yeah. exactly you know, we right. That's right. Yeah. But you know what? All of you guys use technology. I know with me, with the magazine, yeah. you know, it was just a computer and me. I would sit there in my my boxers with my <laughs> ball of Cocoa Me Krispies too. and oh, right. Yeah, Cocoa You're right. Jody's right. in her boxers every day. <laughs> Actually, sometimes we are in our boxers together. But here's the thing. <laughs> you all use Cocoa technology, Cocoa. right? right. You all use technology. It's important. I mean, it's a huge marketing tool. When I started, you know, I put an ad in the magazine. It was very expensive. But now there's so many tools out there. There's like Facebook and there's Twitter. And, you know, I designed my own website off of Squarespace and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you can update it at will. And, you know, it. it Nowadays, you take very little technology and you can run with it. Well, I just yeah. discovered Facebook. Love it. I'm on all the time. Yep. Do all, are all you guys Facebookers? No, friends. Oh, dude, you better be. you got to get on Facebook. Now, and do we all... know what's going on with each other all the time. It's That's really right. cool. Now, do I you guys... some stuff secret. No, you want nothing <laughs> secret. Nothing secret. Now, do you guys tweet? Do you Twitter? I don't I'm going to start. Okay. I and haven't you, had the time. Do you, do you do it? I, I, you know what? Here's the thing. I don't live a Raiders of the Lost Star kind of life. So I, sometimes I tweet, sometimes I tweet. Yeah, there we go. What's now, let me ask you this. So you have your own website. Yeah. You have your own website. Oh, you have your own website. And you have and a, blog. a blog. And I have a blog. And you have a blog. So what's the name of your blog? It's called Designing Things. And what do you do your blog? Fancy Thompson Designs. Do you have a blog? I don't. And I okay, don't. you need to get I your get butt in gear. <laughs> All right, here's the I'm thing. chasing my kids around. But speaking of butts, those blogs are a pain in the butt. Yeah, they take a lot of time to do. What's new? What's new? What's but you new? know, if you're going to start a if you're going to start a home business, it's important to start using yeah. all these tools. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's important to use all I these tools. I have two blogs. I have an inspiration blog and I have sort of a personal slash businessy kind of blog. And I think it's important. People want to know a certain amount of information about you and a certain amount of information about the quilt industry. Right. And you know, and to put it all together, you know, you control what you put on there. So, you yeah. know, That's right. don't be afraid to put stuff out there. And that's how we're all connected. And the thing is about Facebook, all the quilters are supporting one another, whether they're in business or personally they do. The other thing you all do is give free stuff away, which seems counterintuitive if you have a business. That's how I met my partner. I just gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone jump in here? <laughs> 
we, have, we have a free design service. If someone has a, a pattern that they want to match with the fabric, I offer suggestions as far as uh, oh. what fabric lines, or vice versa. If they have a fabric line that they're not sure quite what to do with, I then suggest you know, what I think would be a good pattern. And it's, there's no pressure involved. They either take the suggestion or not. Right. And what do you give away that's free? We give away a few things. <laughs> um, we have free more. <laughs> we, we have free. Be nice to the guests. <laughs> we have free downloadable line drawings of tons and hundreds of continuous line quilting designs. We have preview video clips long, like 10 minutes for each video. Wow. People write me all the time and they say, why are you giving this away for free? But you know what? Quilters love free stuff. It generates goodwill and that's what it's about. We're trying to teach each other how to quilt. Everybody loves free yeah. stuff. Everybody. You know what? You have to give it away to get it. Yeah. Honestly, absolutely. you have to give it away to get it. That's the other thing. If you start yeah. business at home, you think you're going to like charge for everything, you're going to yeah. do everything. It It'll, it'll kick you yeah, in the exactly. butt. I mean, what do you, what do you like give away long. free? What do you give free stuff patterns. away? I, I give away patterns. I have a fabric giveaway right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I believe that you know they helped me get here. Yeah. And I think I should give something back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. Now listen, you had you have young kids at home. Yes. You have a five year old and an eleven year old. Five and eleven. And you have two young kids at five home. Five and seven. Five and seven. <laughs> I just have a husband. You're an old bag. <laughs> um, <laughs> like me, I have a seventeen year old. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, husbands are very I maintenance. Low maintenance but here's the thing I want to know. How is starting a business at home, and I think this is a real problem for most of the, uh, the quilters at home who consider a home business, how that's going to impact their family. Yeah. Yeah. How has it impacted your family with like young kids? Oh, laundry doesn't get done. Yeah. You know, we eat at odd hours. <laughs> laundry doesn't get done at my home. <laughs> They're lucky if they get to eat. <laughs> That's right. What about you? Spring cleaning occurs in the fall, and you know the windows haven't been washed, and things are messy. And what about you? Actually, for me, it's been great because my husband is my partner in the business. He does all the video shooting. He does all the editing. And by my I'm partner, sorry. she means henpecked. But go ahead. No. no. <laughs> I mean, we, we have always made, we were best friends before we ever got romantic. Yeah. And so we Really? Had, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's another show. Yeah. <laughs> it was very awkward getting romantic, let me tell you. I bet. But anyway, <laughs> um, we, we get along really well. He's very, very funny. So the whole process of shooting and editing, it's a really joyful, collaborative effort. I mean, behind the scenes, there's tons of dirty jokes being said, and it's just, it's a good time. I love that. Well, you know, that's really, that's really important. Now, busy as you all are, I'm sure that things have fallen to the wayside, because now you have these businesses. I run around with my kids, and I get the orders out, but the house is kind of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I know the feeling. For me, it's mainly been exercise. If you yeah. watch my videos, you can see a very steady weight gain. Oh, no. I love that. You're a woman after my own heart. You know, we should just pull up a plate of pasta and get our sewing machine done. I love that. I love that. But you know what? Here, I, here's what I want to know. You know, it is difficult doing this at home, and it's very scary when you first start because not only is there the time commitment, you know, there's also a, a money commitment. Yeah. You know, you're, you're really putting all your heart and soul in this. There's an emotional commitment. Mm -hmm. So I want to kind of go around to you guys. Now, let's start with you, Linda Lum de Bono. Yeah. What advice do you have for people who are thinking about getting into this for themselves? Whether it's, you know, whether it's design right. or fabric design or pattern design or long arming or there's a million things to do. What? Well, I think, first of all, don't feel intimidated. Just jump right in and do it. That's um, hard. It is. And, and, you know, you do feel intimidated in the beginning. I'm not good enough sometimes. Or, like, you know, coming from a science background, you're never sure because you've never been criticized or critiqued or anything like that. So I think you should just, you know, jump in there, but do your research, take one step at a time, use all the technology that you can find out there, like, you know, whether it's Facebook to connect with people. And, and I think, you know, if you do it on a, a easy, steady road, you can get there. Well, what's, what's something like a stumbling block that you have that you would give some advice to somebody? What's the advice? Um, what's a stumbling block that most of you guys well, come up with? Well, a few with? things. Um, one, at first I felt like the industry wouldn't necessarily support this product I was putting out. So I think take that attitude that maybe you're riding a new wave. Have the confidence to try something that's a little bit different because it, you may well have a good idea. Now I know from working at home on the magazine, it's really hard to work from home and stay focused on the, on the business. I mean, there's always, you know, Starbucks is always calling you, Mama. Daddy's always ready for a burrito. Never mind the kids. Never mind the yeah, hell with the kids. Let's just go get something to eat. That's right. So tell me, what, what advice do you have for somebody new that's starting? How do you keep focused? Uh, focus is hard because you're being pulled to Taekwondo, to school events, and then, you know, to the business. But me, I mean, I do it because I love it. I love playing with the fabrics. 
Um, yeah, I'm obsessed. That's why it's Quilter's <laughs> Obsession. Right, right, right. I'm obsessed about fabric. How do you find the money to do it? I think you want to be realistic going into this. You aren't going to make money right away. You are going to have to put some money into this and nurture this baby for a while before you're going to get a right. return. I didn't make the choice to just jump in there and spend thousands of dollars or anything. I had to start somewhere. And like she said earlier, what's really important to stick with it, because I was told by one of my distributors that, you know, I had to stick with my idea, even though it was going against the grain. Right. And mm -hmm. you have to stick with it. And, and you're you not going to get acceptance right mm -hmm. at the beginning. You, you make do mistakes, mistakes. You, you learn from learn. them, yeah. and then you move on. Coming up next, you guys aren't going to believe this. <laughs> We go to suburban Philadelphia knocking on some lady's door. Oh yeah, she's a quilter, but she has no idea we're coming. So when will I get a hold of her? We'll see you when we come back. I'm in New Hope, Pennsylvania, right outside the door of Liza Lucy, who's half the design team of K Facet Liza Lucy. She has no idea I'm coming, but she's the funniest quilter I know and one of my favorites. I hope she's home. I hear her. I hear her. Mark, what are you doing here? <laughs> it's the new show, Quilt Out Loud. I'm here to surprise you. Hi, hi, hi. Look at the dogs. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at the dog. Hi, Sadie. Who's this? Girls, come here, Mark's here. Who's this hey. one? Who's this one? This is Ollie. Um, She's our new baby. Hi, Ollie. A pug. A pug. Listen, Liza, yeah. the whole point of us being here is I want to show people your house and your studio and your work room. Okay. See what you're working on. Do you mind? Not at all. Girls, can you grab the dogs, so? yeah. though? These are Hi. Liza's beautiful daughters. Hi. This is Alex. Alex. Hi. And, Hi. and Elizabeth. And, and they're going to control the dogs. Is, just finished her first year of college, and Elizabeth is Evan's age, so we're gonna see if we can get a little, you know, something going on. There you go. Show me, show me. Where's your, where's studio your, is this way. Come on. where's your studio? Come on. Come on. Oh, you okay. have something on the wall. Well, actually, I do. Um, uh, and Alex has designed a second quilt. Um, she, dorm beds are really odd sizes. You'll know this when Evan goes away, and so she decided dorm bed side. Oh my God, yeah, so whatever. Alex did this. She did. She's Out of the K fabrics. Yep, yeah, all the blue and whites, right. Now, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. I have a problem sometimes, and yeah. I think a lot of people do, because the fabrics are phenomenal. Thanks. But when you put them together in a quilt, yeah. do you really do scale? Do you do color? Oh, do yeah. you do tone? How do people feel comfortable doing that? I, I, I love them. But... I, do, I do color. Really, the way I do it successfully, and the way I've taught my kid, and that's why she's doing this, is to put it on a design wall. Um, I don't sew a stitch until I've seen every piece of fabric go where I think it's going to go. Yes. And that way um, I have no seam rippers. So as long as you choose from like the glorious color collection, yeah. all the same kind of color that kind of moves in and out, then you've got yourself an award-winning quilt. Really? Well, they don't look well listen, me. yeah, award-winning. If they don't look at my stitches too carefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I but can't sell it. It's the color. Now, I, I kind of take a look over here, because yeah. I see this this quilt here. This was done with K Fabrics. Yeah, now here's a This good, is Kim McLean, right? Yeah, yeah, she's an Australian applique artist. And, um, oh my God, how lucky are we to find this here? Now? Well, I, I just got it to, to put on display, so here you go. So you just got it? Just. Just, just, just. I saw this she in, just finished did it. I see this in yeah, Houston? You saw it in Houston. Um, my, friend, my friend Becca made it, and um, Kim McLean is an Australian who Look at excels this. at using CAFE's work in applique. Um, oh my god. Now you asked about large scale. What she does is she fussy cuts all his flowers so they become polka dot like. Oh my god. Gosh, Isn't that they're beautiful? just beautiful. Yeah, really it's nice. It's just beautiful. And so she's in Australia. She's in Australia. And she has won so many prizes that the Australians have asked her not to enter any more contests because she's won them all. Ah! Well, listen, here, here's what I'm going to ask yeah. you. Can I get a pattern for this? Are yes. there patterns yes. for this? Yes, I actually went into business with Kim making the patterns and selling them. Oh, so good. So I'm delighted good. to do so that. So can they order them through you? She can. Okay, so look Liza up on the internet. Listen, well, this looks like the K Facet Museum. 
Well, to be honest with you, um, the whole house does. But that's because I was a huge fan of Cave's work long before we were in business together. But how'd you meet him? Because you were a knitter. I was a knitter. He was a knitter. He was a knitter. We worked for the same yarn company. And so when I took up patchwork, I was the one who proposed doing patchwork with Kate. Yeah. And at first he, he wanted to say no, but he was too kind. Mm -hmm. And so I heard yes. And so I just <laughs> proceeded to do quilts and send them over to him because he's in London. And um, well, the rest is four books well, Just ago. so you know, if I walked in that door and you said no, I would hear yes. Yeah. I don't really care, I would have come in anyway. That's right. So these are all the quilts, and this is like the uh, yeah. great stuff. Now here, this I recognize. This is a K-Facet well, cable cloth. Um, it's, it's a new product that we're uh, just uh, launching. It's a laminated fabric. They call it oil cloth, but in fact, it's vinyl on um, cotton. Listen, my yeah. favorite room in the house. You're oh, living okay, sure. Let's go sure, in there. Before I go, listen, I'm taking some of these nuts. All right. Okay. For later. Okay. All right. So, yeah. this room is sensational. I love your furniture, and as a matter of fact, this is k Fabric, cave chair. It is. All, all this furniture is new. Um, Sadie ate a sofa and two wing chairs down what? to the bones. So we had to reupholster everything and rebuild most of it. And this is fabric I was able to get. Um, it's old. It's about 20 years old. I was able to get a roll of it from London, from the Designers Guild. Well, that's great. I once ate a chair, so I'll have to think of looking for delicious? new fabric. Yeah, mm. but listen, I didn't eat anything. And that looks like a cave painting. But is it? Because he was a painter, right? And still is. He, he is he, a painter. He still is a painter. Long before we became partners, wow. I asked him to do a painting for me. I commissioned it and paid for it with my meager sales rep dollars. But I love artwork, and I needed a piece. And I've got two, actually. That's a painting. That's also Cave's. Now, that's beautiful. And that's more of a story. What's the story? The story is that I proposed doing a quilt book with Cave, and he basically sort of said no, as I, as I told you. And uh, shortly after that, a woman called me one day on the phone and said she would like to sell a painting and she hears through the grapevine I'd be interested. And I said, what is it? And she said, it's a K-facet from the 70s and it's of a quilt. Oh my and so I bought it. And I didn't tell him and he came to visit after having said no. And he saw it and he thought it was, you know, a message that we should work together. So there it is. Now here's the deal. Yeah. I know you do your business from home, Glorious yeah, Color. I do. And so the best room in the house, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. is in the back. So come with us, I want to show them. Okay, listen, I'm so glad you were home. I just tripped over the damn dog. No, listen, whoa, 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 whoa. I've been here before. I want to show people this. Okay. Uh, my great-great-grandfather founded Cotts Brothers Department Store in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. Where Evan went to camp. Yes, he was a fabric peddler. Uh, he sold fabric and then he bought it and started a department store. So you come by this naturally. Apparently, I, it's genetic. What is that? This is the only thing I have of his. And it's a thread counter. You see, look here. You can count how many threads per inch. Oh my God! And so this is something that my father gave me because it's the only thing that I have that relates me to the fabric business and my great great grandfather. Oh baby, eBay, here I come. Let's go into this other. This is a K frog. It is. It is. This is a K frog. Yep. We're walking over K frog to get to the best room in the house. Well, come come on. on. Oh my God, Liza. So. Oh my God. We put this on the house because uh, the fabric business grew. My husband and I started a website called GloriousColor.com to sell Cave's fabrics and our books uh, to the world. So uh, this is what we do every day. We have. Can you guys imagine being around Cave Facet fabric, this much of it, all day, every day of your life? I'm in shock. I love it. It's the perfect job. It's the perfect job. Now here's the first Cave fabric I ever bought, Liza. Which is that? It's the Shot Cottons. Well, that's right. Now, didn't he, he wasn't he inspired by the Indian fabric? They, they were done in India, right, hand woven in India. And here's an entire wall of shot cottons over here. Oh my gosh. And you know what? They look good in every quilt. They really look good. Well, you in every were in that quilt. Suzani class. You I got to use them. Yes, you're very famous. That's when I first met him. That's and right. And that's when I first met you. That's right. That's right. And look at all this. Look, this is one of my new favorites. I happen just to glance over here. Love this. Take a look at this. He uses color in such a unique way. I think so. That it's just, it always looks fresh, no matter how, how much he does. I mean, how it's, often he does a, a collection. Yeah. Just amazing. Now listen, what? I saw something in your kitchen I want to see. Come what on, come? let's go. Okay. The they look amazing. And I told you, cupcakes are the new thing. Alex and Elizabeth made these just this morning. You did? Where are they? Come here, sweeties. Come here. Come to daddy. Come here. <laughs> look. Now, should I make you eat them first? Um, no, it's okay. You All right, here we go. I can't wait to have it. Okay, let's see. Taste test. Very delicious. Daddy <laughs> loves it. Oh, one more thing. Yeah. I want to show, tell me about that quilt. That's a very famous quilt you have hanging there. Yeah, um, we did that 
for uh, our second book called Passionate Patchwork. Mm -hmm. I bought antique blocks that were made by some demented person about 100 years ago, and then applied the antique quit blocks to a new bottom, a uh, new foundation that I had made. Right. And then we took other antique yo-yos and melons and so on and just sewed them to it. So it's lots of old things applied on new. They're ama that's amazing. Thanks. Um, that's amazing. I never wrote the pattern, but piece of cake. Do you know those folks? Yeah, I love they, them. They did it in their spin book. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I knew I saw that before. Yeah, they asked. Well, I'm so glad you were home. Me I'm too. so glad you were home. I'm so glad I got to meet the new dog. I'm so glad you didn't kick me out of my butt. Thank you so much, Liza Lucy. I, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I love you girls for making this. <laughs> mm, for me. I'm taking the whole, I'm taking the whole fight. Mark, that was a great segment. There's nothing like going to a quilter's place where they work and see where they work and what they do. That was fun. I love those knocking on the door segments, Mark. And I loved her bulldog. Now, here's the thing. You can find out more about Liza Lucy at our website at QNNTV.com. Did you have fun? I had fun. I had fun. <laughs> lots of fun, lots of fun. <laughs> Mark is off in the field shooting another of his great surprise door knocks and in the meantime we are here in the studio sewing. Today's project is called Gentle Spring. It's a really pretty flannel quilt. It's so soft and yummy and as you can see the blocks are baskets. Believe it or not this really is an easy quilt to make. We're going to go through it step by step to show you how to make it. The quilt, you can find the instructions for it in the summer 2009 issue of Easy Quilts magazine. It has all the instructions and you can also even order a kit for it with the Northcott fabrics just like you see here. The first step is of course cutting out the pieces for the quilt. And I've cut my triangles which were squares and then cut them in half. And I just wanted to show you how this nifty guidelines for quilting ruler works because I'm going to cut some three inch strips and cut them into five and a half inch long pieces. This guidelines for quilting ruler is really a handy tool because it has this strip that comes off on the back. And what this does is, let's see, I'm going to be cutting a three inch strip. So I'm just going to put the little plastic strip on the three inch mark and it snaps into place. And now this acts as a guide that I butt up to the raw edge of my fabric. Now right here I've straightened up the edge and so I butt up the strip and it slides right on really easily. And now all I do is cut my strip and I know that every time I cut one, it's going to be perfect. I don't have to worry about keeping on adjusting my ruler to make sure that I'm at that three inches and then halfway through my cutting forget and I'm on three and a quarter. It just does it automatically because you butt it right up. It's an ingenious thing. So then all I do after this is I will cut this into five and a half inch pieces. I have everything cut and so now it's time for the first thing that we're going to do which is put the handle on and it's really neat because we're going to use our baby lock sewing machine and a wonderful stitch to do some machine applique. So this is the block that we're going to make and the first thing we do is the handle part. This is simply a triangle with the handle applique. So I have that triangle in different fabrics because there are a variety of fabrics in this quilt which is one of the things that makes it such a nice quilt. I've cut the, the template out of the magazine. I made a copy and cut it and now I'm just going to place this here on my rectangle and now I'm going to trace around. This is a chalk pencil and I'm using the blue. This comes in a package of four different colors and so they work really well because you have all the different colors you might need. So there, I've traced around it. Now that I've got that traced, I need to go over and press my handle. Now with my handle pressed, we get to sew. Now what I've done is just, I'm going to, you could pin this if you want, but I find that I get a nicer curve if I just start sewing. And what I've done is I've laid the handle down on that blue line. And now I have threaded my sewing machine with an Aurifil thread that is, I'm using a yellow that's probably a little brighter than I would use 
with this fabric. I just want you to be able to see what I'm doing sewing. But it's still yellow and the stitches will be so pretty actually it'll look good even though you'll be able to see them. But if you wanted to at home have the stitches disappear, use something that's a creamier, lighter yellow. Now on my sewing machine I am choosing a stitch that may, is made just for this kind of machine applique. It has a jump over and then it takes some straight stitches and then jumps over again. And it's number Q12 on this machine. Now I have already practiced, I would always suggest that you make a little test. Now we're ready to sew. And what this stitch will do is lay down some straight stitches on the right and then it will jump in with one little V strip that catches and I'll show you right when it does it, right there, when it catches the handle itself. So it's catching the yellow handle fabric. And what I'm doing is I'm just watching this line that I've drawn and just turning the handle around as I go. This sewing machine just, <laughs> it's like butter sewing on this flannel. I just love it. I haven't worked with flannel a lot, but this just goes along so easy. And as you can see, you would think that this might be a hard thing to do, to sew a curve, but the fabric and the fact that I cut this on the bias, which the instructions show you how to do, and that just means the cross grain of the fabric, that makes it easy to turn the handle fabric around. And then the sewing machine, because it has this wonderful stitch and, and sews so beautifully, it makes it easy as pie to do this. And there we go, now we have half of our basket handle done. Now as you can see, this is not a difficult project. I wouldn't do it as my first project, but maybe third or fourth, somewhere like that, because really all you're doing is cutting squares, cutting them into triangles, and then the sewing's simple, other than what you would think machine applique would be difficult, but with a good sewing machine, it's really a piece of cake. So now we'll just finish by sewing the inside of the handle, and then we'll put our block together. As you can see, I've stitched the top triangle to the bottom triangle. I changed to a straight stitch and changed my presser foot too. And now, there were three more steps in the process of putting the block together. I'm going to sew these together, and these together, and then I have another triangle that will go on. So this is really easy. You just sew. It's straight sewing. Line up those raw edges and start sewing. As you can see here, I'm using a starter strip. That's this little strip here that I first sew some stitches on. And with a flannel, I'm finding that the flannel wants to go into the feed dogs of the machine. And so if I start on the starter strip, that won't happen. So that's a little tip for you. This quilt is a great gift. It's soft and warm and flannelly. Who wouldn't want to have this for a nice cold winter day to cuddle up in and think about spring? That's why it's called Gentle Spring. So now with all of these pieces made, all I have to do is put the block together. So I'm putting on the last triangle on my block. And while we're at it, I want to give you a tip. When you're laundering any quilts that are made with flannel, be sure to clean out your lint trap often because they do create a lot of lint. So there's our finished block. Now I'll just repeat this and make all my blocks and then follow the instructions in the magazine to put them all together with the setting triangles. What a nice, warm, snuggly quilt. Here we are back at Quilt Out Loud and we are going to review some books today. Yep. And the books we're talking about today are machine quilting. Some of the new books out there about machine quilting. That's right. So I picked a few that I liked, you picked a few that you mm -hmm. liked, and here's what we have. This one I liked. It's from Mary Mashuda. 
It's by CNT Publishing, and it is called Foolproof Machine Quilting. Mm -hmm. Now, what I like about this, not that there's any like real surprises here, but what I liked about it is that she teaches you a paper folding technique so that you can make your own quilting designs. I was actually at a Bernina function, and she had all of us do it. And this was top national teachers, and we were all just totally enthralled with it. Yeah, it's really a, it's a mm -hmm. great technique, so I like that one. Well, this likewise, Machine Quilting the Basics and Beyond by Lynn Witzenberg, is also a basic book about machine quilting. And I mean basic soup to nuts. It goes on through everything, but it really is exhaustive in every kind and step of machine quilting. Well, what so kind? Free to motion? Free motion and stitch in the ditch, using your walking foot. Trapunto? Trapunto. Yeah, everything. everything. And it opens flat, which yep. is great. I love a Landauer book. Love those yep. Now this one by Ava Larkin for that patchwork place is called Free Motion, Quilting Made Easy, 186 Designs from Eight Simple Shapes. And what she does, it's less than a how to do some quilting, uh, machine quilting, but more like different designs for machine quilting. And one of the things I really love about this book is that she gives you the inspirations for these, but you know what? you should do, Jody. here's how I learned how to do it. You go to a toy store and you buy a magna doodle. Oh yeah. And then you can, with free motion, you can just kind of work your designs on the magna doodle and get rid of it. So it's, it frees you up. It's that same eye-hand coordination thing? Totally. Oh, that's cool. So it works perfect for something like this book, this patchwork place. And that's what, something you can do on the beach or anywhere. Anywhere. You know? Yeah. Well, this one, One Line at a Time by Charlotte War Anderson, it's got geometric quilting designs in it, which I find just fascinating. And so it shows you all sorts of different geometric designs which you can scale up and down and use them as general designs. And if you know of any of Charlotte War Anderson's work, you know you have to learn how to machine quilt from her. She's That's amazing. Right. She's great. Amazing. And then these, these two books kind of are similar even though they're different authors. Mary M. Covey, it's not really a book. It has a little instructional pamphlet, but this is just to get you started. It teaches you how to transfer the designs. But what's cool is in here are all of these designs that you can then transfer directly to your quilt and use them. Right, you can pounce them. Mm -hmm. And this is by, from that patchwork place. Yep. And then Glorianne Cubbage has done another one, twice quilted. And what's really neat is she's taken two designs and superimposed them. So here she has the leaf design, but then she has a rose design over them. So that gives lots of extra oomph. Right, right. And if you do in two different color threads, you've really got a lot of oh, depth in your yeah. quilting. Oh, so yeah. And that's those are that, our favorites. That's that patchwork place, too. Yep. Those are our favorites. So, listen. Here we are at the end of our show, and we have a question from Debbie Horowitz from Manhattan, New York, and what she wanted to know was, where are we from? Jody, oh. where are you from? I was born in Providence, Rhode Island, and okay, I have a story. What? Do I sound like I'm from Rhode Island, I'm a New Englander? No. My mom was from New Jersey, and she had no accent. My dad was from Rhode Island and had a Rhode Island accent. So they're riding horses, because that's what my mom did when they were dating. And mom knew she was going to marry this man. And dad said, hey, Ann, she was up ahead on the horse of hand, hey, Ann, you want to go to the potty? And my mom was so embarrassed, because she thought <laughs> he said potty. And so that was, once she realized what he said, she swore her children would not have a Rhode Island accent. <laughs> well, that's very funny. I grew up inner city Pittsburgh. Well, that's not true. I was raised in inner city Pittsburgh. I grew up in San Francisco, if you know what I mean. I uh, moved from Pittsburgh when I was 18 to San Francisco, and that's where I, I really spent my formative years. After 12 years in the Catholic school, it was San Francisco. <laughs> now I live in Long Valley, New Jersey. So that's where we're from, and that's where we live. That's right, Mark. We'd love to answer your questions. You can send us a video via YouTube or any other way, and also you can email us your questions. Find us at QNNTV.com, look for Quilt Out Loud, and also you can contact us via Facebook. We're both on Facebook all the time. Till next time, we'll see you next week on Quilt Out Loud. Quilt Out Loud. Bye. See ya. Bye.